Well, hello, my friends. Uh, yeah, I'm working on this CIA thing, just uh, exploring the CIA in my own funny kind of way. So I'm still capturing images to put on that video, and then I'll put it up. But uh, yeah, <laughs> had a long bike ride to talk for an hour and a half. That was kind of crazy. Anyway, I was thinking at the end of that ride, it actually <laughs> crazy. Uh, an hour and a half of video, and I was still talking. And at the end, I was talking about how I read books and why it doesn't matter. And But it, I didn't have any more space left on the card. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about it now. Yeah, I was thinking, uh, you know, I've always been hopeful that more and more people would uh, achieve a better and better quality of education over time and that we would become uh, smarter and smarter, better decision makers, better critical thinkers. We would develop great bullshit detection kits. Uh, we would become more compassionate, more empathetic, more caring about everything on earth. And, uh, you know, just become wiser beings, you know, homo sapiens as opposed to homo makers. And um, that the future would be bright. But, you know, it's weird when I think about it in a meta kind of way or whatever. I mean, why should I care? Why, why do any of us care? I mean, what we have to do is survive. We have to mate, reproduce. We have to eat, sleep, um, take care of our biological, bodily functions, uh, get on with life. You know, we're acculturated and programmed by our uh, experiences and our environment. And so, uh, you know, we crave attention and status and we need stuff and we're violent. We get angry. We're, we're emotional creatures. You know, this is what we are. We're monkeys with, with a big brain that take a long time to develop uh, our Think about how long a human childhood is compared to other animals, mammals. So, yeah, we, we, we run around the world using all the materials of our world to make stuff, to do business, to make money, to have power, control. We have all these ideologies and philosophies and <laughs> everything. And to what end? I mean, at the end of the day, we're all doomed. You know, my friend was teasing me about uh, doomsaying on Facebook and I was like, yeah, well, it's like, um, how about a movie called The Cancer in Me? So there's a scene of a guy in a hospital bed um, with all the machines <laughs> tied to him, maybe getting uh, chemo. And then, then the next shot is, uh, you know, 20 years earlier. And we go back, you know, and realize that, you know, the, the cancer cells in you have been there for a long time before, for some complex bunch of reasons, they're activated and you get terminal cancer and, you know, whatever. But anyway, we're all going to die, right? Quick or slow, violently or peacefully. And nothing lasts forever, but we've had this basic kind of civilization for a long, long time. You know, I mean, whether they're kingdoms or democracies or dictatorships or oligarchies or whatever, we've had uh, ways of organizing society since civilizations started uh, happening. And all of them end and change and morph and move on. And we're all basically the same. I mean, I keep thinking, you know, if you go back to Socrates' time or if you go back and talk to Jesus, you know, you'd recognize them as people. Of course, they wouldn't know as much about how the world works, you know, physics and mathematics and other things than we do. But most of us today are fairly ignorant of almost everything. So I was thinking about, I read all these books, what good does it do me? It doesn't stay in my active memory. You know, I can't just uh, access all my reading from memory and 
even if I could and have a discussion with somebody down the park or down the pub, uh, would they want to listen to me talk about neuroscience or, you know, nuclear energy if I could have a, you know, a, an intelligent discussion about it? No, they would think I was boring. Uh, most people don't want to talk about Thomas Aquinas or something like that. Existentialist philosophy, you know, um, Jean-Paul Sartre or whatever. Uh, you know, you talk to people about genetics, 23andMe or something, and maybe they read something about it five years ago and the science has moved on so much from five years ago that they basically don't really know where things are or they watched a TV show like 60 Minutes and and somebody said, you can't really find out if you were the relative of the King of Spain in 1326 from 23andMe. And it's like, is anyone saying that you can? But the more data that comes in, genetic data, and the more we learn about the genome, the more kinds of information and accurate information we can get from it that pertains to health and all kinds of things. But the point is, uh, we get a little snippet of information, we forget about it, but we have an opinion on it, and we think that our opinion is always up to date because it's stuck in our head somewhere. And yet, you know, it doesn't matter what we know in a way. I mean, I love reading. It's a pastime. It's a hobby and all that. But what good does it do anybody in the world if I read a book? So now I'm reading... Uh, i just getting through the introduction to Robert Sapolsky's book. Uh, it's called Behave. Uh, let's see the title. It's, it's called Behave, the Biology of Humans at Our Best and Worst. And the, very, the introduction just hooked me. I'm so happy and excited to read this book. And I know I'm going to learn a lot. I've been a fan of Sapolsky for a long time, going way, way back. So he's an interesting guy. He's a professor of biology, neurology, neurological sciences, neurosurgery, BioX. He's a member of BioX and the Wutsai Neuroscience says Institute. You know, he's like on his website. Um, he's just got so many accolades. He's he's published so many papers. I've watched his lectures. Uh, his class, classroom lectures on YouTube for, you know, at least 15 years or whenever YouTube started and he started putting up the videos. Um, he's really interesting. And on his, his web page, uh, it's amazing. Mini med school, it says. So there's one, okay, a human bio. So he has all these sections on his, his website. Intro to Human Behavioral Biology, Behavioral Evolution, Behavioral Evolution 2, Molecular Genetics, Molecular Genetics 2, Behavioral Genetics, Behavioral Genetics 2, Recognizing Relatives, eth, uh, Ethology, Advanced Neurology, and Endocrinology, and I've always been interested in that. But I don't know shit. Limbic system, aggression, aggression two, aggression three, aggression four, chaos and reductionism, emergence and complexity, language, schizophrenia, depression, individual differences, uh, toxoplasmosis. Are humans just another primate? <laughs> so that's, that's one section of stuff that he teaches, right? And mini med school. So DNA, stem cells, tissue regeneration, the world within us, microbes that help and harm the world outside, a changing environment and how it affects us, global health, challenges in the 21st century, how technology gives insight into human anatomy and disease. And then reading materials. God only knows he's got tons of stuff on his website and He's an expert. He's spent a lifetime studying these subjects, really deep into it. 
But what do any of us know about any of this stuff? And what, what do we care? We just don't. So it's, you know, you go to, you go to Jay Dyer's uh, um, podcast and you listen to stuff about, uh, you know, or Orthodox Christianity and, and you pick apart the Bible and everybody who's written about the Bible for thousands of years. And, um, you know, or you're mystical, you're, you're transcendental, you know, you, you believe in the Quran or whatever. And um, all of these other explanations, materialism, you know, you go back, what is materialism? When did that start? And, and so on. Anyway, whatever you think about, it doesn't matter. You know, and you're curious, and you're excited. And he sells a lot of books, but, you know, nowhere, he doesn't get anywhere near as much attention. So I had to change my battery there. Um, anyway, so, yeah, Robert Sapolsky doesn't get anywhere near as much attention as PewDiePie. Or, or, you know, NFL or whatever, European football, soccer. People just don't care. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's a small group of people that utilize this information to do something with it. Uh, and generally, I think it's to manipulate and control people uh, for the acquisition of power and wealth. But anyway, a lot of good comes from it, obviously, in medicine and education and culture and so on. It's nice to know how things go, but it requires so much energy and work. So time, money, and uh, energy, right? And that's, it's, uh, you know, are you going to invest that in, in learning this stuff, and then afterwards, what are you going to do? What kind of career are you going to have with that? So most of us just want, you know, status and money and things and, you know, petty power and petty control over our petty lives. But that's okay. I'm not saying that's bad. That's just the way it is. But, yeah, I read books. So what? Recommend books. So what? I mean, a lot of my friends would just kind of think I'm weird if I <laughs> recommend this book to them, you know. I mean, why would I spend time reading this stuff? I just find it interesting, and I wish that more people did read these kind of things, and this is one of the reasons why I share um, these videos. Maybe five people who watch might become interested in it and do I think it's going to change their life or that they're going to become super important people because they've read this book? No, I just think they might find it interesting like I do. So it's similar to anything that you're enthusiastic about. You want to share that. So we have the sharing economy and we have Facebook and all that kind of stuff because uh, we want to share something that we like or care about with our friends or acquaintances or whatever. That's basically all it is. But what comes of it? There's so many good books. There's so much great information out there. And if people were more knowledgeable, more aware of these great things that human beings do, we might be able to come up with a better and better ways to organize and manage our civilization to the benefit of everything, life on earth, you know, global health, health for everything, you know, for the food chain in the ocean, for the food chain in, in the soil, uh, for everything. And just, you know, I, I don't know why I care. Like, wh why should I give a damn if, uh, if your grandchildren have a wonderful life. And who's to decide what a wonderful life is anyway? You know, should we all upload ourselves and onto servers on the moon and have robots maintain them for us? With the AI thing, you know, these, uh, these, it, these are just tools that human beings are going to use to manipulate and control, which is what they do. It's not a big conspiracy. It's lucrative 
and it works. And controlling human beings through propaganda and religion and other th other ways, mechanisms or what have you, have been around forever since civilization began. Beliefs, emotions, it's so easy to, to affect us, to uh, make us feel something and there, thereby do something. And of course, it's so complex. So this book, uh, Robert Sapolsky's book, it's like taking down the barriers of all the various complex domains of that impact human behavior and synthesizing them uh, into a coherent understanding of all the complex things that are going on psychologically, environmentally, biologically, and so on, you know, neurologically, that make us behave the way we behave. And yet we have this illusion that we're in absolute control of everything we do, whether we're fortunate or unfortunate, whether we're sick or angry or, or enlightened or whatever. We take credit for it all. We take the blame for it all. And we don't understand just how delicate and complex human nature is and how totally intertwined with all of nature uh, that it is, our behavior, our sense of self, our identity and whatnot. We get all caught up in these hip, fashionable things. I always say we're slaves to fashion and you can't say that anymore because it'll offend somebody. You can't use the word slave or slaves, but we use it metaphorically in computer programming and other things. But anyhow, uh, we are just completely so easily uh, caught up in fashion and fashion changes. It's ephemeral. It doesn't you know, you don't land on one square and say, this is it, we're all done. <clears throat> Nothing's going to change. It doesn't work that way. So I believe that if we were more enlightened and aware and educated, we could build peace. We could, we could maintain peace. We could, we could do better. We could have better systems, better structures, better ways of governing, governing ourselves, and, and more wise ways of using our tools and technologies that wouldn't threaten our very existence. Whether you think, uh, you know, AI is an existential threat or not is beside the point. It's arguable. We'll find out. But I think we could use these tools in very positive ways. You know, what does Yuval Noah Harari know? <laughs> but he did, he did give a good uh, talk at some forum about it that he, he I kind of thought he was pretty on the mark but uh, one thing's for sure human beings are going to use tools uh, in very haphazard and evil ways sometimes and I think the more wise we are the more educated we are the more we understand how things really work and yes there is truth in physics in mathematics in what we've learned from psychology and anthropology and sociology and all these things, philosophy. Uh, there are truths there to be had and understood and used and felt and admired and respected. And these things can be wonderful for all of us uh, rather than just getting caught up in, in a fashion and becoming all emotional about it and being totally out of control, hopeless, helpless, powerless people, being manipulated by people who have more uh, agency, more power, more sovereignty than we have. Maybe it's easier just to have the law passed down from on high and obey, or maybe it's, uh, it's exciting and wonderful to have more responsibility agency, more control over your decision-making processes, and so on. Maybe there's more to life than just status and getting attention. Maybe relationships really do matter. And maybe uh, it can be a wonderful thing to have relationships with people that can talk to you about literature and science and history and books 
I sound like uh, some, you know, Nouvelle Hermann Hesse novel. But I think uh, there are valuable things to be had there, and some people have access to them, obviously. Sapolsky sells books. People read them in one ear, out the other. You know, it comes in the brain and dissipates. And what do we do with it at the end of the day? We do nothing with it if we don't advocate education and enlightenment and an open society in a certain way. Now, you can define these things in, in ways that straw man them and make them sound weak and bad for people. But the fact is, human beings are curious. We created all these tools because we could, because we had the capacity, the intellectual capability to figure out how to split the atom and uh, make the internal combustion engine and cotton gins and rifles <laughs> and airplanes and spaceships and lunar landers and uh, antibiotics and vaccines and all the other things. We have the capacity and capability to do that, which means, as uh, Jim Rutt would say, we have a responsibility, if we're the only intelligent beings in the universe, to keep our species alive so that we can continue to explore and, and learn about the universe and do wonderful things, as opposed to just flying off the handle and killing each other over nothing. And believe me, uh, action, reaction, you keep pushing people, like with the CIA thing, you have Indonesia, you have the Indochina, you have uh, Central America, you have all the shenanigans going on in the Middle East and on and on and on into Ukraine and whatnot. Push, shove, pressure for ideological reasons, for commercial reasons, for mercantile reasons, for capitalist reasons, whatever your reasons are, and just pushing people towards uh, enmity, war, insecurity, instability, and so on. And it doesn't have to be that way. I'm a firm believer in that. Maybe you want to just say, well, human nature, humans are fuck-ups, period. So you can't expect too much from people, except that people like Robert Sapolsky and people with less, perhaps, genetic intellectual uh, capacity exist, and they grow, and they learn, and they evolve, and they develop into wonderful human beings, whether they're artists or scientists or business people or music, you know, whatever. And it's a marvelous thing to see. And we, we admire these people. And uh, we're amazed by them. They're heroes. But you're a hero, too. And you also have capacity. What we want to give our children is every possible chance to be uh, a star, to realize their potential, right? And what's wrong with that? I just don't get it. Why do, why do LGBTQ people have to be pounded? Why do women have to be subjugated? Why do we have to tell uh, people from poor countries that their lives are valueless unless we're taking their resources from them and using them to create products and, va and add value to those products and sell them around the world? through the miracle of logistics powered by fossil fuels that don't last forever. And just like I said on the bike ride, you know, to my friend, yeah, we get uh, fusion energy and we have all the energy in the world and then we just use up the planet faster than we would have if we hadn't had the energy. Because under the current, sorry, Jim Rutt, paradigm or way of doing things, um, we, that's what we do. We just deconstruct and build shit and waste shit and create garbage. And at the end of the day, you have Blade Runner, the, the newest movie, just a huge garbage heap with machines and computers and, and people living in the garbage dump. <laughs> it could happen. Um, these things can happen. And you look around your, yourself and see what's going on if you, if you keep up with current events. And you'll say, well, you know, things are pretty damn good, but they could be a lot better, and there is still a lot of 
bad things happening. Negative externalities from our business, businesses, uh, you know, I mean, it's just, you know, you see the, the city, right? Oh, well, Russia doesn't have any ammo. And then you look at these uh, towns that have been completely pounded by shells for months and months on end with all the collateral damage we're talking about. And then some people are just slobbering at the mouth because, well, we're going to go in and we're going to take up all these contracts and rebuild it. And it's going to be better. No more commie blocks. It's going to be really nice condos. And, you know, China's lining up and America's lining up, Europe's lining up to do the work, you know, to compete for those contracts. And we need another Cold War to keep the Chinese out of it. And uh, <laughs> it's all absurd, man. A waste of energy, a waste of human life, a waste of human potential, a waste of nature, a waste of beauty, a waste of, of all the good feeling uh, and love that human beings have. And this is tragic, not necessary. I don't know why I like reading books. Maybe I'm just a dumbass. But I don't think I'm smart because I do. It gives me hope. I guess in the same way that going to church gives some people hope that after they die, the hell and the struggles and the strife of life will end and they'll be in heaven with their loved ones, which is lovely. And I get hope from knowing how beautiful, loving and heroic and brilliant human beings can become under the right circumstances if they have the right genes and good health and a good environment and so on. Yes, my friends, circumstances will dictate what happens to us, how we shift and change. But the power that you have to contribute somehow and influence the way things turn out, that's something only you can grasp and take control of. So yeah, go to all your gurus online. Go to all your motivational seminars and whatnot. Read a library of books. Do your best. Uh, eat the perfect diet. Do the perfect exercise routine. Uh, become a quality man or woman or whatever you think. But yes, give it a good college try. We go out swinging. Uh, make an effort. I hope people will we'll respect the various ways that we all make an effort. And uh, let's try not to be destructive. That's the main thing, right? I mean, we really don't have to kill. We don't have to be. Civilization doesn't have to be an omnicidal heat engine. Uh, but anyway, you have kids, you have loved ones, what do you want for them? Think about it. So, um, yeah, I read books. Not going to change the world. The video is not going to do anything for the world. I'm just doing this because I need to express myself. You know, some people do it through filmmaking or art or making money. Uh, at the moment, this is my way of expressing myself, and I appreciate you for listening to me. And uh, I hope you'll click like and share the video, and maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe somebody will benefit from it. I don't know. But thanks a lot. Anyway, have a wonderful week, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bouillanti, out. <laughs>